Linux Deepin, I'm back here again discussing this subject. But this time because of the end user license agreements. How many other Linux distributions are there with an end user license agreement? Well, there is a kind of license agreement with most versions of Linux, the GPL license agreement, or GPL v3, or other license agreements that are more friendlier to open source software and using the software for any particular means that you want. No, we have a full blown end user license agreement with Linux Deepin. I can guess why they've done this. Oh, would it be to anything to do with their old tracking that they used to do? Being like every other Chinese tech company? Probably. So Linux Deepin were caught with their proverbial hands in the cookie jar, tracking what users were doing with the Deepin App Store. This wasn't just an app store for installing the applications, no, it also handled the user updates, which meant this program would run regardless of whether you wanted it to or not because of the updates. So you were effectively handing over tracking information to a third party tracker, CNZZ, and there was no mention of this. There was no end user license agreement before with Linux Deepin. And we're talking what, version 15.7, 15.6? Was it 15.5 as well? I can't remember how far this goes back. So before we dig into this, let's just take a quick look at the GPL v3. So foundation is a GPL. The freedom to use the software for any purpose, the freedom to change the software to suit your needs, the freedom to share the software with your friends and neighbours, and the freedom to share the changes you make. Very fair agreements, that is. So how does Linux Deepin's version compare? Well, I have to say this is an awful font, and I'm going to zoom into it slightly on this video. Perhaps that'll help you read it. But I will strain my eyes to look at a very small white font on a blurry background. So updated date, 4th of January 2016. Well, that's funny because as I mentioned, the previous versions did not have such an agreement. Perhaps they did have a EULA, but they never displayed it at time of install. This does occur at the time of install. I've literally chosen the language that I would require and you have to scroll all the way to the end of the document in order to accept it. So your agreement is with Wuhan Deepin Technology Company Limited. Yep, that is the company behind the next Deepin, the Chinese company behind the next Deepin, and I'm just stating that for a fact. Make of it whatever you want. So it is kind of split out into various paragraphs. There are about 14 different paragraphs with various subsections. So license authorization, subject to the following terms, Deepin Technology grants you a perpetual, worldwide, and non-exclusive license to the software and multiple components that are pursuant to this EULA and GNU General Public License version 3. I just wanted to get that paragraph out of the way to show what components of the license we're applying to. Paragraph 2, Intellectual Property Rights. Yeah, that one's reasonable enough. Paragraph 3, Redistribution. Somewhat different to GPL on the terms of redistribution, but not overly bad. Paragraph 4, Specification. This is more controlling what you do with this operating system. So the use of this software is subject to the laws and this EULA. You're not entitled to perform the following activities by using the software. To publish, deliver, transmit, or store any content that contravenes national law or threatens national society, reunification of the nation, social stability, or anything that is inappropriate, insulting, defamatory, obscene, violent, and against the national laws, regulations, and policies of any particular country, don't know, not allowed to publish, deliver, transmit, or store content that infringes others' intellectual property rights or trade secrets. You can't issue, deliver, or transmit bulk advertisements or spam. Point five I thought was rather interesting, so you're not allowed to take actions to threaten the security of the network, and it references the effect of normal operation of the software on the network, intentionally spreading malicious programs or viruses, and take any other actions to damage or intervene with the normal information the service of the network, forge part or all of the titles of TCIP packages. The titles of TCIP packages? I guess they mean headers of packets. Paragraph 5 mentions a warranty. 
The media and its components will be free from defects, material, workmanship, under normal 30 days from date of delivery. So 30 days of downloading this ISO, it will be free of any defects. We've got to use and abuse these things sometimes, especially if they go in your favour, 30 days warranty. Paragraph 6, Support Services. You expressly assent that Deepin Technology can use technical information you provided, if any, such as bug, feedback and suggestions, for business purposes, including but not limited to software supporting and researching. Unless necessary, Deepin Technology will not specify, mention and mark the information source when using it in support services. Is that related anything towards tracking or could that be expanded in future in terms of tracking? Well, they're talking about bug and feedback suggestions and a later paragraph does discuss feedback you do provide the company. Again, I'm taking the way they're writing that as being written information that you are willingly handing over to them rather than any automated collection of data. Paragraph 9, export restrictions. You agree not to export or re-export the software or any part of it. It is a direct result of the software to any country outside of China mainland. So how was I able to download this ISO file? I'm not in China mainland. Paragraph 12 deals with feedback. And as I mentioned, this is where I believe you're willingly handing over feedback. So the way I'm reading that it is as such, I'm not going to read through all this thing. Paragraph 14, interpretation and modification. Deepin Technology has the right to interpret and modify this EULA to the maximum extent permitted under law and reserves the right to modify this agreement at any time in accordance with the changes in the relevant laws and regulations as well as the company's conditions and business strategies. Modifications that you learn will be shown in a new version of software for acceptance before you use it. In the event of a dispute, the latest EULA shall prevail. If you do not agree with the changes in the EULA, you can uninstall and delete the software and destroy the relevant information. If you continue to use the software, you are deemed to have accepted the modifications of the agreement. So we're just going to have to watch out for the changes in every upgrade. So overall, this is not an horrifically bad EULA. It is not too overly restrictive unless you're planning on using it for, let's say, penetration testing, in which case if you're planning on doing penetration testing, your choice of distribution will more likely be Kali Linux or any of the others similar to that. And this probably wouldn't be one of your main choices. So. It's not all bad there. But as with so many things in technology, we almost have like the, let's give you something really fair and simple to start with that you're probably not going to disagree with. And yeah, that's fine. And then as we go on later on, we'll start being more invasive, change these things and gather more information. I'm just using that as a theory, but yeah. Let's make these things more invasive later on. So what are your thoughts on it? Do you like these end user agreements or would you rather Linux had nothing to do with them at all? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you all later.